So we've got the same 20,000 genes in each of our cells. Each cell is the same set of chromosomes, but we don't want each cell to produce the same protein. We don't want cells producing all the different proteins that the genome has. We want certain genes, therefore, to be switched on and others to be switched off, depending on what the function of that cell is. And this is what we call gene expression. And we're going to look at a nice, simple example of gene expression in E. coli. Even the bacterium E. coli does not have all its genes switched on all the time. For E. coli to digest and absorb lactose, it needs to make two enzymes, one called beta-galactoside permease, another one called beta-galactosidase. However, if a bacterium is living on glucose, then the, the genes required to make those enzymes are switched off. It doesn't need them, it's got glucose, it's got a substrate, it's fine. But if you grow E. coli on lactose, then these genes need to be switched on in order to make those enzymes to digest the lactose in order to be able to absorb it. And the genes required for this are on a particular stretch of DNA called the LAC operon. Now, when protein synthesis normally occurs, RNA polymerase binds to a promoter region and just reads the DNA code in order to transcribe the messenger RNA. We know that from protein synthesis, that's the normal process. On this strand of DNA, there are three structural genes to make the enzymes required to break down lactose so that the E. coli can use the sugars. Here are the three genes, LACZ, LACY, and LACA. Okay, so these are the ones that need to be read. So how are these genes switched off? Well, actually, there is a section called the operator, which has a repressor boat protein bound to it, which blocks the RNA polymerase. So here's the operator, and there's the repressor protein at the top. The RNA polymerase can't move along, and therefore will not be able to read those three genes. So when E. coli is growing on glucose, this is the situation that you'll have. The RNA polymerase is blocked, and therefore those genes aren't, aren't read. Now the regulator gene that codes for the repressor protein is actually found upstream from the operator. So it is coded for first. So actually it's a little promoter and the little gene there to make the repressor is made. The repressor then goes and binds the operator and therefore the RNA polymerase can't travel any further. So if E. coli finds itself though in a lactose substrate, how are these genes switched on? Well, the lactose can actually bind to the repressor protein. And when it binds to the repressor protein, the, it changes its shape and it can no longer bind the operator. So it's released from the operator. And when that happens, obviously, the RNA polymerase is now free to continue moving along the DNA strand. It can read those three uh, genes um, uh, in transcription and then translation can occur from the messenger RNA to make the three enzymes required to break down lactose. Now this is just one example of operon. An operon is actually a unit made up of linked genes which is thought to regulate other genes responsible for protein synthesis. And you will need to apply these principles of this LAC operon to other operons in, this co in the course. Now the study of genes, which is known as genomics, is obviously a very big area of research and a huge international effort was made to work out the entire human genome, which was fully published in 2003. Um, however, this is only the beginning of the story, as due to the many post-transcriptional modifications such as splicing, the complete set of proteins expressed, or proteome, is actually much more complex than the genome. Therefore, now a lot of researchers are actually studying proteomics. This includes protein structures, functions and locations, post-translational modifications, protein interactions and complexes, uh, and how each of the above responds, uh, responds to various stimuli. One of the biggest applications of proteomics is in biomedicine. If we can work out what sort of proteins are present in a cell or tissue, it can tell us a lot about it. The most prominent disease being studied with proteomic approaches is cancer. They are being used uh, to improve screening and early detection of cancer. If specific biomarkers are present in diseased tissue, then drugs are designed to alter protein function.